Hey everybody, hope you guys are healthy and safe. So you know the old saying, it's not always about looks, it's what's on the inside that counts. Well, that's the iPhone SE 2022 in a nutshell. While this phone can be called minimal, sleek, understated, and perhaps even iconic, I can't say this phone looks good, not in the technical sense anyway, not when there's such thick bezels on top and bottom of the screen, not with this 60 hertz LCD display that's not even 1080p resolution. However, despite that, this phone you know, is definitely not the sexiest looking gadget around. It's what's on the inside that counts. That's because this phone has the most powerful brain of any smartphones right now. It runs on the Apple A15 Bionic. This is the same four nanometer chip that's powering the iPhone 13 series, including the iPhone 13 mini right here, all the way up to the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And there's no other way around this, whether it's real world performance or benchmarks, the Apple A15 Bionic is the best chip on the market. Yes, better than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 2. So that means this iPhone SE 2022, which costs 430 US dollars, has a more powerful processor, more powerful brain, than Android phones that cost $1,400 or $2,000. Okay, I'll get back to the A15 Bionic pretty soon. Let's first look at the overall hardware of this phone. I'll be fast because there's really not that much new here. So Apple has brought back the entire outer shell from the iPhone SE 2020, which itself was a recycled body of the iPhone 8 from 2017. So yeah, the components here are pretty dated. So you have a 4.7 inch LCD panel, square boxy corner. So it looks quite odd. So after using big phones for so long, now that I jump back to such a small screen, I have trouble typing and text look a little bit small, but still construction is good. The front glass and back glass um, uses Apple's uh, toughened ceramic shield glass. The chassis is aluminum. Everything blends in seamlessly. And of course, underneath the screen is that iconic circular home button that also houses a fingerprint sensor, which Apple calls Touch ID. I am not a fan of losing a whole chunk of screen space for a fingerprint scanner. However, in 2022, where I'm still wearing a mask every day out and about in Hong Kong, it's frustrating using an iPhone with Face ID because when I'm wearing a mask, Face ID doesn't work. So Touch ID kind of benefits me in a way in that I can unlock the phone now easily without needing to pull down my mask all the time, which is what I have to do when I use an iPhone. Now I know the update is coming that supposedly allows you to unlock your mask, but I haven't gotten the update yet. Now this phone is really small. It measures only 5.5 inches in height. That's about 138 millimeters to everyone else outside of America. And the thickness is 7.3 millimeters and the phone weighs only 144 grams. This is really light because every other phone I test now, particularly from Android, goes well over 200 grams. So the fact that it's 144 grams, this thing feels very dainty. Now, because the bezels are so thick, that means the iPhone SE 2022 is actually still taller than the iPhone 13 mini, despite the fact that this screen is much smaller. However, the iPhone SE 2022, it's a more comfortable in-hand feel because the sides are curved and rounded, whereas the iPhone 13 mini has those sharp, hard edges that, you know, it looks cool, but I am not a fan of this design in the hand. This one definitely feels a bit more comfortable. It nestles in my palm a little bit more gently. Now, this one also has IP67 water and dust resistance and wireless charging. So both of these are features that you, you don't often get in a phone under $500. Now the Apple A15 Bionic is indeed more powerful than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, but you're not going to notice that doing regular day-to-day -day tasks. Like if you're just scrolling through Instagram or sending an email, performance here will be the same as the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 or even a two, three year old chip. Where the A15 Bionic really stands out is when you do tasks that requires heavy computational power. Like if you're editing and rendering 4K videos. Now it's a little bit ridiculous to edit 4K videos on the screen, but if you were to do this, you'll be able to render 4K 30 footage or 4K 60 footage much faster on this phone than on even the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. I do these uh, video editings all the time on the phone because I shoot a lot of videos out and about and I edit them for Instagram. And it just, the rendering is so much faster on A15 Bionic compared to any other Android device. Now where the Apple A15 Bionic also will help is in making the most of this camera hardware because the camera hardware here is not good. This is the exact same camera hardware seen in the iPhone 8 from 2017. So it's a 12 megapixel sensor, F1.8 aperture with a really small sensor size compared to any other phone out in 2022. However, as Google has proven, if you have really, really good software and computation power, you can overcome mediocre camera hardware and that's what Apple does here. The A15 Bionic brings all these new computational features that Apple introduced in the iPhone 13 series such as HDR4 and Deep Fusion. You get both of these 
in this phone. You also get older iPhone technology such as portrait lighting. Now portrait lighting, you know, may not seem important to people who don't care about selfies like I don't, but you can't deny that it takes a lot of computational power for a phone's single camera to map your face and apply lighting to it that looks natural in real time. And you can change the lighting back and forth too. Now for the most part, the main camera here does a really good job during the day, despite the fact that the hardware is not good. You have really good dynamic range. The camera is really fast to focus. There's zero shutter lag and it's just a really responsive camera overall. But where the software really benefits, it's in video recording. You know, iPhones have had the best video recording for years and the iPhone SE 2022 continues that trend. Now, because image sensor is small, it doesn't bring in a lot of light. So at night, the videos will suffer. But during the day, video footage from this phone can go toe to toe with the best of Android. In fact, if you compare video footage shot with this phone to a similarly priced Android, there's no contest. Now, I don't have another Android in this $430 price range. The closest I have is the Poco X4 Pro, which costs like $350. So it's a little bit cheaper. However, as you can see here, video stabilization between the Poco X4 Pro and the iPhone SE 2022 is just night and day. The iPhone SE 2022's video footage just looks much better. You can also shoot up to 4K 60 with this camera, which you can't do on a lot of Android phones under $700. But ultimately, the software and the chip can only do so much because the sensor here is still relatively weak. So when you move into really low light photography, the iPhone SE 2022's photos suffer compared to, you know, like an iPhone 13 mini or any other Android above like seven, $800. Likewise, if you shoot in challenging conditions, like against harsh backlight, you know, where HDR really needs to kick in, I find that the iPhone 13 mini's camera does a better job too, even though they run on the exact same chip. Now, the fact that there's only one lens here also limits camera versatility. I'm someone who likes to use the ultra wide lens a lot and I'd like to take a lot of zoom photography. You don't get that here at all, unfortunately. So if you're someone who cares about versatility in mobile photography, this is not the phone for you. But if you're someone who just needs to take basic photos and handheld videos and you just want it to look stable and smooth, then this gets the job done. Now the selfie camera here is a seven megapixel f2.2 lens and is really showing its age. During the day, it's still okay because the software can fix a lot of things, but at night, selfies are very soft and noisy. Now one more area the A15 Bionic comes in handy is battery life because this phone does not have a big battery at all. However, it can last me not quite all day because I'm a very heavy user, but it can last me like eight, nine hours on a single charge away from the charger, which is okay considering how small this phone is. I remember using the iPhone 12 mini, that phone wouldn't even last me eight hours outside. Now in terms of software, this phone runs iOS 15 and uh, it's a typical iPhone software. It's the exact same software as in any other iPhone. So by now you should have your opinions on it, whether you like it or not. I personally prefer Android because it's a little bit more customizable. However, I can concede that iOS does a lot of things better than Android. AirDrop, for example, it's super convenient and there's still nothing like it in Android. I can send photos from my phone to my iPad or my Mac easily and also seamless connectivity. I have an iCloud subscription, so my entire desktop on my Mac is an iCloud drive. So that means whatever files on my Mac, I can get on this phone right now if I just jump into the files app. And of course, the Apple Watch, it's the best smartwatch in the business and it only works with iOS. So there are a lot of benefits to iOS. And that's ultimately the second major appeal of the iPhone SE 2022. It is the most affordable iPhone. There's no other iPhone in the world right now under 500 bucks unless you buy something old. And that matters to a lot of people, particularly in North America who really need an iPhone because of the iMessage lock-in. It's a real thing. Like Wall Street Journal did a whole story on it. Like there are kids in high school right now that feel left out if they're using an Android because all their friends are on iMessage and there's like the whole green bubble, blue bubble thing. I personally think it's ridiculous, but that's what it is in America. So if you are now a struggling student, a teenager, and you want an iPhone and you don't, you can't spend $700, $800, you have the option to get this for 430. Likewise, if you're a parent and you want to buy your kid a phone and you know your kid's going to whine and cry if you get them an Android, you can get them this budget iPhone. So it kind of shuts them up a little bit. They get an iPhone, but you don't need to pay like seven, eight hundred dollars So ultimately the iPhone SE 2022 appeals to two people. The first is if you really want an iPhone, but you can't afford to pay more than $450, like you just can't spend $700 on an iPhone 13, then the iPhone SE 2022 is for you. 
The second group is if you really want a small phone, you don't like big phones, but you also can't spend $700, then this phone is for you. If you can spend $700, then I would say the iPhone 13 mini, it's a better option. I mean, like this phone is a much more modern design and you get a better cam system too, but there is like a $270 price gap between these two and that matters to a lot of people. And that's perfectly fine. Apple did not make this phone for people like us. Apple made this phone for people who don't care about looks so much, who may be less superficial about the gadgets because to them, it's what's on the inside that counts. So anyway, that's about it for this review of the iPhone SE 2022. If you enjoyed this video, please um, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I have a lot more content coming up, including a review of the iPad Air 2022 a couple of Xiaomi devices and a lot of stuff too. It's a busy month. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.